<laughs> She's way down there. I'm up here. It's hard to catch us. We're at Davenport Gap. We're about ready to begin hiking again. Uh, we just spent a really nice night in Newport, I think it is, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was nice to sleep in a real bed, but it's just uh, one night out to do laundry because uh, I had a lot of wet stuff from being out there and, and just in general. We had hand washed stuff in Gatlinburg, but there's a lot to be said for actually throwing it in a machine and actually having it washed and dried. Mm -hmm. So we got all our stuff good to go. We should have good weather for the next couple days and then it gets a little messy. We're going to try and get about uh, 30 miles over these next two and a half days. Yep. Uh, but we're only doing about eight miles today. Um, I think we're, we're going to go into Standing Bear, check it out. Um, might get you another fuel container for that matter. He, he had a good point. Okay. And, um, but at any rate, yeah, we're going to run out and uh, go into Standing Bear, check it out. That'll be a little bit of a delay. It's an uphill day. And then we'll see if we can't get ourselves a campground about eight miles or so in. Mm -hmm. And then deal with it the rest of the way. So, Oh, and uh, hi to um, Ophelia and Matthias. And if you're watching, and uh, just to say hello and uh, come along on this hike. Bye-bye. Here's the trillium plant that looks like it's getting ready to flower. I'm not sure if you can see this, but there are some nice pools in here and waterfalls. I don't think I'm ever going to get through this trail today. I have to keep stopping and taking some photos of those beautiful creeks. Just gorgeous. across another beautiful waterfall. Water is super clear. Coming up on I-40, you can see it there. But before we do, and up there, we've got this river to cross. This is a pretty decent river. Blaze. Good to know we're on the right trail. So I have no idea what river this is. But it's not half decent. AT going this way. So we'll pass under I 40. Yeehaw. Kind of nice not to have to dodge cars on the road like that. Weird to think I'm walking under I 40 over here. Runs on through Albuquerque where I grew up. Learned to drive, so I can assure you I've taken a wrong turn at Albuquerque. Probably both metaphorically and literally. But anyway. Onward and outward. Oh, the happy hikers. Thrilled with this fine set of stairs. You can only hear the whining and the moaning going on. I tell you. Yes, you can tell how happy she is by the way she's taking the stairs. Must be something going on. I guess I will find out soon enough. Ah, it's a bad sign. They're going pretty slowly. Up, 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 up. Oh, hikers love hills. Can you hear them? Into the forest we go. Seeking some peace and quiet. Not really missing this stuff. I think the arrow says we go down that way, hopefully find something a little bit easier. 
And then that little sign, barely red, with trash next to it, says Standing Bear, which is a hostel that she's got a package at, so we are going to go to Standing Bear. 0.2 miles off of the trail, and the end of this gut hook section is Standing Bear Hostel. Kind of a trail icon. You can rent these little cabins without bathrooms that are right next to the creek. Hostels beyond. Get different comments and gut hooks. Uh, it's an icon. Some people say it's a really cool place to stop. You'll also see comments about it's an outhouse privy. Showers, maybe you need to wear camp shoes in. Things like that, so not sure what to think, but Susan's got a resupply box. So we're gonna cruise on in there, see if we can pick up a Gatorade before we go. Susan will get her box and we'll be hiking. We just we just showed up at Standing Bear Hostel and here's the entrance way. We're gonna go check this out. Here's a view of it and they've got laundry, kitchen. Very cute place. We're moving on. At least we were moving on until I started talking. A daily selfie video. So we're getting out of Standing Bear Farm, heading back out into the great beyond. Kind of an interesting day that I can't show on video is having to change my map. We use an app called Guthook out here. And you buy the Appalachian Trail and it puts it out in sections that you download. But at any rate, this whole trail up to this point, Standing Bear Farm, has been a single map. And then now I have to break over into the next section. I think it's Standing Bear to Damascus. I'll have to, I downloaded it, but I just need to install it on the phone. At any rate, we're heading on out. We we're talking about how surreal it is in the sense. It seems like a couple days ago, we're hiking in ice, snow, all of that fun stuff. And today, it seems like we've walked out into spring. It's warm. We've seen forsythia, which I just learned what that was, yellow flowers. The other flowers that Jane will post pictures of. Uh, very interesting day. Just like we've walked in, we've, we've hiked north to get warm. Explain that one to me. At any rate, I think it'll be a good day. We keep coming across these nice little streams of water. It's a nice big pool there. Nobody ever talks about Snowbird Peak. I don't know how much this has been. I'll look it up. I think it was about 2,600 feet, three point something miles. It was a good climb. At the beginning especially, there were some spots where as I'm climbing up, I have to wait for Jane to take a few steps and realize her butt's at my eye level where she's at before I can move. It was steep. And it gets around to 10, 20% elevation. That's a rest. It's a good climb, but we're at the peak. It's uh, got some sort of communication tower, maybe FAA or so on top. I'll show you here. Did you see the uh, radio mast right there? At any rate, I am going to chase Jane down. She's continued plodding on a bit. We have about three miles to our next water source and about half a bottle of water. 700 milliliters. And it's getting warm. Fortunately, it's pretty much all downhill. So we're thinking we've got the worst of it. We're gonna guzzle our water, get ourselves as hydrated as we can, and stroll our way downhill, hopefully. So this looks like something out of a bad horror movie. Children of the Corn or something. Horror for me, still gotta go up a little bit. Oh my goodness. I don't recall anyone ta talking about Snowbird Mountain. Oh, this has been brutal. And we're at the final piece, I think, coming to the top. Ah, uh, well, guys back at work, FAA much? The other tower mast, I guess you can't see through the trees, was back over there someplace. At any rate, moving on, we're gonna go this way to where that little peak is. That's not really a peak, it's just down and up. And then we're gonna guzzle our water. Here's the 
here's a view at the top of Snowbird Mountain. It's a little hazy out there. There's lots of little gnats and stuff flying around. It's driving me crazy. But what a view. Check that out. Zoom out. Looks like there's a little fire, like right over. Oops, I think it's blurring, but right over this way, there looks like there's a fire or it's a controlled burn. Whew. Wow, incredible view. We're almost to the campsite and we came across a water source and Paul's filtering for us. And he also set up a little a little spout. Check that out. A little a leaf there. And it makes it easy. Just made it to this shelter and the tents down there in the in the woods. And then I wanted to show you their privy here. Nice scam back a bit. This is their privy. Now, there's nothing wrong with it, but the problem is, is here's the little handle they open it up and you sit there in the toilet. But then if you're tall, <laughs> you can have a conversation with somebody as you're sitting on the pot. So as you can see, we got the, the fireplace back there with some hikers. Um, but yeah, it's really bizarre. They don't give you much room to turn around in. Um, so yeah, I gave it a shot and yeah, it felt kind of odd. <laughs>